Good evening, church. <laughs> I'm just making sure you're paying attention. <laughs> the title of the sermon is There Was a Man Sent by God. About three weeks ago, God woke me up. And he gave me this sermon. I will deliver it like the Lord gave it to me. I pray that I don't drop the word that he gave to me. As a matter of fact, last week I thought I was going to deliver this message. The pastor wasn't feeling well and I walked in. But the Lord preferred it to be this Sabbath. I know that you all came to hear pastor preach. But I hope that your ears are open to hear God speak today. Amen. 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 Listen to what I'm going to tell you because I have to set the stage so that there will be no misunderstanding. And if you disagree with me, let me know now because if you don't agree with me on this, then there's going to be issues in the process of how we're going to go about it. The God that I serve is the same today, is the same yesterday, will be the same in the future. Is that the same God that you have? I ask, is that the same God that you have? I want to make sure because later on, I don't want you to say that what we're talking about is impossible. I will ask again, the God that I serve, the God that you serve, is the same today, is the same yesterday, is the same always. Amen? Amen. Okay. Open your Bibles again. We'll start from where he uh, picked up. It was on John 132. And it reads like this. Today, we're going to get the message from the Word of God directly. You want God to speak to you, you must open his word. Put your eyes to it. Listen with your ears because if you pay attention throughout the Bible, he always says, if you have ears, listen. So that what the prophet Isaiah said about us will not come true. He says that we have ears, but we don't hear. So we must listen so we might repent. We need to repent. And this says like this. It says, And John bore witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dog, and he retained, remained upon him. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. When I was 14, around that age, I was baptized. But I was more than baptized with water. I received the Holy Spirit. I want you to open your Bibles because today you will understand what it is to walk with God. That is going to be the main message. But there are certain things that we have established before we continue. So Matthew chapter 17, verse 10, verse 13. And you all know that I always do this on purpose. Every time I preach, I always use a different Bible that is not my custom one. Because it helps me find the word and it helps me time. When you spend a lot of time with the word of God, it's easier to find stuff. And it says this. Remember today God will speak directly to you. It is not, Elder Ugo, forget what you know about me. Forget that I'm the head elder of this church. Forget that we fellowship together. 
I want you to know that God himself is here today. It says this. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? Jesus answered and said to them, I'm reading from Matthew chapter 17. I'm on verse 11 already. Jesus answered and said to them, Indeed, Elijah is coming first and will restore all things. Pay attention to he's saying, will come. But I say to you that Elijah has come already. And they did not know him, but did, but did to him whatever they wished. Likewise, the Son of Man is also about to suffer at their hands. What we're reading here is what we call the transfiguration. Elijah and Moses came to talk to Jesus. Three of his disciples got to see this. Peter, John, and James. And they asked him, Elijah is to come first. And that's what we're going to pick up because it is very important that the Bible is the easiest thing to understand. Especially when you have God with you. The word Elijah, or the name Elijah, do you know what this means? Elijah, all he's saying is, Yahweh is my God. When you look it up on Google. But God himself told me, Elijah means Elohim is my God. Do you know what Elohim means? It means that my God can create out of nothing. It means that the name that you carry, because people of God, you carry his name, he can create out of nothing. So therefore, nothing is impossible for him. Do you believe it? I want you to continue, and you're going to go back. Let's read Matthew chapter 11. Ten and fourteen. And this is just the introduction we're going to receive today. And he says, I'm going to read a little bit from number seven. He says, as, as number seven says, as they departed, Jesus began to say to the multitudes concerning John, what did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? But what did you go out to see? A man clothed in soft garments? Indeed, those who wear sons' clothing are in king's house. Pay attention because I know you already know the story of John when you read it on John chapter 1. Where did people like that stay? At king's houses. But what do you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I say to you, a more than a prophet. <coughs> For this is he who is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your ways before you. So it is written, God sent me. Whenever Jesus testifies a kiss, talks about somebody, It is very deep what he's really saying because that is called revelation. So Jesus testifies about you today, giving you revelation. So today we're going to go to what 
matters today what we're going to be talking about. Let's go back to John chapter 1. And we're going to read John 1, 6. You notice that all we did before we did this was just establish the faith so we can understand. Because if we start using different names throughout the Bible, I want you to continue to understand that all we are talking about is that Elohim is my God. And it says, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. So, the Elijah to come today is you and me. And he sent us to do the same thing. Look at Luke chapter 1. That's why the scripture says to spend time reading the scripture left and right because in it you're going to find salvation. And remember that getting to know the Father, that is eternal life. And this is what he was going to preach. Look what he says. This is uh, happened to his dad. He was going to go in, do a sacrifice, but he had a revelation. And the Lord sent Gabriel to talk to him, and he told him what. John was going to preach. And he tells him this on verse 14. No, on verse 15, he says, For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong, nor strong drinks. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb, and he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. <laughs> He will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of just of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. <coughs> I'm making a pause because it's very important. Listen. Listen. When we pick up on John, what happens is this. And I'm going to tell it to you because I know you know the scriptures. The Lord sent John to preach so that we may repent. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. And when he sees the people of God coming, the leaders, the Pharisees, and the scribes. He starts his sermon like this generation of vipers. Imagine today somebody getting up here and starting a sermon this way to us. We will feel offended. And they also write, later on it says that while we were picking up, that in Matthew and Luke, they say it was the Pharisees that went to go ask him who he was. And the Pharisees are more similar to us. They believed in the Sabbath, and the restoration, and the coming of the Christ. And yet Jesus was with them, and they did not see him. And John says that he did not know him, but he saw him. How is this possible? So we're going to retrace 
because it is very important for us to learn to walk with God. Amen. And we're going to determine this. Look on first Genesis. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 9. I'm making a pause on this one because this is very important for all of us to see with our own eyes, to hear it with our own ears. And listen to that, what it's saying here. This is the requirement that God expects from me and from you. Three weeks ago, the Lord woke me up and said, Who or where have you been? He says, Who or do you know where Philip Church is? He says, and then, where are my people that have my name? Why are we so empty? And I thought he was talking about the shares and he was talking about the heart. He says this, he says, Noah was a just man. When you read the word just, it means Noah was a righteous man. And notice what it says, perfect in his generations. God expects us to be just and perfect. And notice what it says, Noah walk with You know, I did not realize personally that I have stopped walking with God. And the elder not walking with God. Yes, he says, many of the church are not walking with me. We are something else. Because we know how to keep a face. And it's very difficult for us as a leader sometimes to confess, to say, you know, because when you walk with God, something happens. And this is what we're going to study. He says, who are you have walked me since you have been 14 and I have talked to you since we were 14, eight. He goes, you were eight? Something happens sometimes that you stop listening. But look what it says. So the definition of being perfect and righteous is walking with God. There's somebody here asked before Noah that was also with this quality. And it's found in Genesis 5.21. And every time that somebody walks with God, he has to be a witness. He has a message to give. Notice what it says. Enoch lived 65 years and he got Methuselah. On 3022 it says, 522. After he that got Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God and he was not for God. So here we have Enoch. And if you read the book of Jude, you will find that Enoch who preached the seven day Adventist message. I repeat, Enoch was preaching the seven day message. He preached and walked with God so much 
the Enoch do not just know God's name, God knew Enoch by name. So much so that God decided to take him without seeing what? Impossible. But we read that the God of yesterday we already determined from the beginning. It's the same. That's why when he talks that you or the Elijah of today, it is very easy to understand when you read the word of God. Elijah walked with God. And he got a disciple. This disciple asked him, you know what? Give me double portion of the spirit of Elijah. That's a hard thing you ask, but if you see me when I'm taken away, you will receive the double portion. And it was so. When God came, he took him. That's where we started when we started this. Because Elijah was taken by God. He did not see that. Because he walked with the God so much that God knew Elijah by name. Pastor Walker preached one time. If you, I don't know if it was in the afternoon, but you're missing out. The young man was thrown on top of Elisha, that disciple. He came back to life. A dead person came back to life. Bones resurrecting a person. Why? Because even in the bones, the Holy Spirit's there. Moses walked with God. But Moses committed one sin. So therefore he had to die. But God loved Moses so much and knew him by name. And the Bible says that he spoke face to face with God. So he brought him up. And right then Jesus was going to be sacrificed. Moses and Elijah came to talk to Jesus of the things that were about to happen. It is impossible for us not to testify of the God that we have. We can live a perfect life if we walk with God. But there's another man. He was saying, you know, because the Bible gives us many examples, and when you heard the sermon, you know, that's what I say. If you read John, the story of him, you will understand what John was saying to them. That's why when Jesus, right, spoke to the people, he expected them to understand. God expects us to understand what he's talking about. You know, Jesus was here and he says, how long do I have to put up with y'all? When will you learn? Genesis chapter 18. I didn't want you to get lost. Remember. Listen with your ears. Look with your own eyes. God does not change. Sometimes we find it very hard to read scripture. But 
Before there were 12, they knew the entire scriptures by heart. We spent time learning Bible verses in class. But listen to what this has to say. Are you prepared? Listen to what how prepared we have to be. Sometimes we tell stories. But when you read it directly from the Word of God, it's home. It says, Then the Lord appeared to him by the turban, trees of Mary, as he was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day. I'm reading from Genesis chapter 18. Read Abraham's experience. Because when last time I preached, I gave you my testimony. Nobody can take your testimony away when you're a witness with God. Because it's something you have experienced. I've gone to pray for people that are really sick. Already done. In the name of Jesus, get up. God requires of me when I pray for somebody to already know what his will is. Not to be doing during the prayer asking for his will. And the only way I will know what his will is is if I constantly walk with him. Listen what it says. In verse 2. I'm just giving you all time too. And it's, I'm telling it to you just the way I had it in my dream. It says, So he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing by him. Three. El Odin. And when he saw them, he ran from, tent, from the tent door to meet them. And bow himself to the ground and say, My Lord, singular. If I if I have now found favor in your sight, do not pass on by your servant. Please let a little water be brought and wash your feet. And rest yourself under the tree. And I will bring a morsel of bread that you may refresh your heart. After that, you may pass by Ismanus as you have come to your servant. They say, do as you have said. Here's Abraham. He sees God. He runs toward God. He bows down. Abraham invites God into his house. This is how prepared we have to be for the second coming of the Lord. Amen. Listen, listen. It's there. Abraham washes their feet. They eat bread together. And Abraham has the audacity later on to do something we call intercessory prayer. Because God was about to go do something and he tells Abraham what he was going to do. And Abraham says, forgive me, Lord, but if there are 45 just men in there, we will still go and destroy it. I don't think that nobody here in this church will do that right now if the Lord was with us. Do we have that relationship with him right now? Well, we should. Or is there a 40? And he keeps asking. But, you know, you start looking around to that church in the neighborhood and you start wondering, you know what? Are there are 30. How about do we have here I feel um twenty?
do we have 10? How many did God find? But Abraham had the audacity to ask. Do we? What is your testimony? share Jesus with others because we don't have that personal walk with God we don't hear him when he speaks to us and we don't see the Holy Spirit And Jesus is really not inside of us. Because if he was, you will be recognized by your fruits. And that was the sermon. That's the sermon that he always gives his people. Look, let's go back to John because I don't want nobody getting mad at Elder Hugo. That's why I said it. Forget that he's here. one among you where is Jesus? 
Where is John saying that Jesus is? He says among me. Okay. Don't get mad at me, okay? You got this right here. Right here, right here. He is right here. But there's this one among you who do you not know. It is he who is coming after me. He's before before me whose who sandal straps I am not worthy to lose. The reason is you need to be baptized with water, but you also need to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the one that baptizes by the Holy Spirit. You know, I told a pastor that I was not a fan of Ellen G. White, but if you ask me, right, just because we're sitting there, I'm, just, I'm bringing this up. Did God speak to Ellen G. White? Yes. And who was she? She was just a little girl that got hit by a rock. So I know you guys are not going to have a problem with me. <laughs> now we're going to read 29. The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. How hard can that be? All we have to do is say, Pastor Walker, there's Jesus. You have issues? Go to Jesus. He's going to take away your sins. I'm only addressing him like that because we, the leaders, have a harder time walking with God sometimes. Because every time we go everywhere, we're the ones that have to pray. We're the ones that have to be up front. We're the ones that have to direct. We're the ones that have to teach. And God likes to spend time alone with us. Amen. All we have to do is say, but you know why we don't do it? Because we're not walking with Him. This is He whom I said, after me comes a man who is before, before me. For He was before me. I did not know him, but that he should be revealed to Israel. And whenever the Bible uses Israel like this, he's talking about the converted, the followers of God. When he uses Jacob, he means the pagans in the pagan state. Therefore, I came baptizing with water. And notice what it says here. Here is where you must pay close attention. You must learn to walk with God because he makes you responsible for this. If you are going to be saved, you have to be a witness for him and you have to give proof. Don't be afraid. He says, and John bore witness saying, see, when you're a witness, nobody can say that you're lying. Because that's your personal experience. You're testifying something that you know from first hand. Nobody explained it to you. You know it. I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he remained upon him. Remained upon Jesus. Now I'm going to finish with this. On verse 4. Of John. Listen, I'm going to read this. 
this. This is what we're going to finish. We're just going to leave it as it is. He says, Therefore, when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, and there's a parenthesis there, although Jesus was not baptizing, it was his disciples. He left Judea and departed again to Galilee, but he needed to go to Samaria. So he came to a city of Samaria with his co cycle near the plot of ground. That Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being weary from his journey, sat through by the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. A woman in the Bible always represents the church. Always. You want to read it spiritually. Start thinking spiritually. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, how is it that you being a Jew ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman, for Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God, oh, if you only knew what you have, church. And who is it who says to you, give me a drink? You would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you go get the living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who had gave us the well and drank from it itself? As well as his sons and his livestock, Jesus answered and said to her, Listen to this. It's easy to win people for Christ. It's not hard. Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. Mm -hmm. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. The Holy Spirit out of you. Springing. This is springing. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst, nor come here to draw. Jesus said to her, Go call your husbands and come here. Jesus knows your sins. Jesus said to her, The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you have well said, I have no husband, for you have five husbands, and the one who you now have is not your husband, is that you spoke truly. The woman said to him, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worship on this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. Listen. Church, believe me. The hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Walk with God, and if you're not walking with God, go find him. It is time to you bear fruit as a church. I will leave it as this. I think God has spoken to you. And if God has spoken to you, you can come up. I'm going to have a word of prayer for you because I think it's time that we all learn how to walk with God. 